Once again, it's my favourite time of the week when I get to sit down with your comments on the Kermode Uncut uh, site. Now, I did a couple of blogs recently about actors about whom I have particularly strong feelings. One of them, Richard Gere, who I know is not the world's greatest actor. The other, Emma Thompson, who I think we are generally agreed is a national treasure. Let's start with the Richard Gere issue. Um, I did a blog saying that Richard's acting could basically be broken down into the three constituent parts, the three Bs, breathing, blinking, and buns, recently replaced by breathing, blinking, and Buddhism. And many of you have written in saying, well, you know, there are a couple of films in which Richard Gere is actually a proper actor. Internal Affairs, the Mike Figgis film, is a perfect example of that. He's very decent. That Days of Heaven, he's a proper actor. And I agree, those are both great performances. They're kind of out of character with the sort of stuff that I generally really like about Richard Gere's performances, is that essentially it's always the same performance. Some of you have written in saying that I'm being sexist, that somehow if a woman had done performances that, that bad, I, I wouldn't forgive them in, this, in the way that I forgive Richard Gere. And, you know, I, I don't think it's anything to do with sex. I just find Richard Gere entertaining on screen. Anyway, here are some of your responses. This from uh, DeFeus. Very good analysis from Dr. K, but nevertheless useless for a useless actor. From Ernie Stevenson. Surely this technique, the BBB technique, can be applied to almost any actor. I've studied Roger Moore and discovered no more than one column in my graph, actually a matrix, E for the eyebrow. This from Andy Goth. The only reason to note the career of Richard Gere is that he has the distinction of being in the worst film ever made, First Night. Incidentally, on a factual note, First Night is not the worst film ever made, not by a country mile. The worst film ever made is Exorcist II, The Heretic. It had a bunch of money behind it. It's a terrible film. Or, if you don't count that, Oversexed Rug Suckers from Mars, which was a film that was so bad that even Colourbox, the video company who distributed Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, balked at putting it out. Moving on, therefore, to the subject of the sainted Emma Thompson. Now, what I said in the blog was that I really think that Emma Thompson is one of those people that every time you see her name in a film, it's extraordinary. You know, there's going to be something worthwhile about the film, even though at the very beginning I, I didn't get her. I really didn't like Dead Again. I called it Dreadful Again. In fact, a number of you have written in saying, Dead Again is not a bad film. It's perfectly all right. It's, you know, it's a perfectly enjoyable film. It's not. It's a terrible movie. And funnily enough, I, I watched a little bit of it again just the other day to see whether my newfound admiration for Emma Thompson changed it. And it doesn't. It's still a total piece of pants. Anyway, this from Spanking the Chibot, which I'm sure is rude. Another perfect example of the best thing in an average film is Stranger Than Fiction, which I didn't mention in my blog. I think it's Will Ferrell's best performance frankly isn't saying that much. Maggie Gyllenhaal really surprised me, and I always find value in Dustin Hoffman, but the narration by Thompson just shines through the whole film and keeps me coming back for more every six months or so. Yeah, I mean, even Emma Thompson, I think, has a hard job with Stranger Than Fiction, but she's definitely the best thing in a bad film. She's brilliant, says Spanking the Cheaper, and like another user said, a national treasure. This from Steelman61. So, a glimpse into the Dr. K psyche. The magic roundabout and we all know what that was about at bedtime. Explains a lot. Can I just say on the subject of this, this whole idea that the magic roundabout is somehow riddled with drug references is a load of nonsense. You can say that about any great kids' fantasy adventure. Incidentally, the story that the magic roundabout in its French original is a political satire is also nonsense. I have read erudite essays saying that Dougal is a stand-in for de Gaulle, which is great, except for the fact that in the French version he's called Pollux, not Dougal, so it doesn't work. To finish up from Steelman 61, for me, Remains of the Day will always be the yardstick to compare all performances by Emma Thompson. And finally, this from Wolf Ticket. She really is that good, so good, that her performance in Wit totally destroyed me. Along with Dancer in the Dark, it is one of the films that, although great, I can probably never bring myself to see again. It even made it difficult for me to watch her in anything else for a good while afterwards. Well, I understand that reaction, but I have to say, you do need to get yourself to see Nanny McPhee and The Big Bang. When I did the blog, I hadn't seen it, but I said, I trusted Emma Thompson. I trusted Nanny McPhee. I went to see it last Friday, and I was just thrilled. I wasn't let down in any way. I laughed. I cried. I was a child all over again. Emma Thompson, she's great. Nanny McPhee, she rocks.